Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome, my hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers upon the Sunnah and FM. It's another exclusive episode of FMF 5 Minutes of Faida. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, ya ma'bat. We previously did an episode called Chains. And alhamdulillah, we did a part two to the episode Chains, part two. In which we spoke on the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. That's been collected by Imam Abu Dawood in the Sunan, in which the Prophet is quoted to have said, Tasma'una wa yusma'u minkum wa yusma'u mimman sami'a minkum. You will hear, others will hear from you, and then people will come who will hear from those who heard from you, or as the narration states. And then um, we explained this hadith, we comment on this hadith. We gave some faida regarding this hadith. And in part two, we spoke on what Khatib al Baghdadi said about the Isnad and about its connection and that being a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this Ummah. So, in this episode, which you can make a call Chains Part 3, just think about some of the tangible benefits of a chain. So, right now, we're looking at an old ancient anchor. MashaAllah. It's pretty big, formidable size, and alhamdulillah, you just marvel at it, all right? Iron, the metal, how heavy it is, how old it is, how much rain has fallen upon it, and the different changes that went through this uh, device and this contraption, this anchor, and these chains. Look how solid the chains are. So just think about Islam, and think about what the Isnad does for the deen. And think about what the chain is meant for in the worldly usage. It's meant to hold something in place, hold something down. A chain could be used to hold a person down or an animal. Someone could be a captive, an outlaw. Someone could be a slave, a, a prisoner, a servant. Okay? Someone could be held for ransom. A chain is a means of security, it prevents someone from stealing something. And from walking away with the thing that they have no right to walk away from. A chain is meant to hold something in place. No matter how strong and how powerful the wind may be. Or the rain or any type of weather condition. So think about a chain. Then think about a chain when it comes to jewelry. A necklace. A bracelet. You think about links. You think about metal. You think about steel and iron. Gold. You think how a chain is beautiful. It's a means of adornment. It's a means of uh, uh, beautification. Things like this. But just look at these chains. Look how hardy they are. And rusty they are. But they're still what? They're solid. And they're strong and they're formidable. Because they were forged properly and strongly from day one. So what I'm trying to do or where I'm trying to get you to go. The vision that I'm trying to spread with you. Is how Allah Azza wa Jal has said, Inna nahnu nazilna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Certainly we have sent down the dhikr, and certainly we will protect it. We will keep it safe. So when Allah says we, the concept of the Quran being sent down, Allah sent it down with His knowledge, by His knowledge, His power. Allah Azza wa Jal, if He sent down the Quran, He is promising to keep it safe. So all of the miraculous things that we can't even begin to understand and comprehend regarding the power of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, sending it on the Qur'an and giving it to a man who was never properly trained to read and write, then what do you think is going to happen with regards to the preservation of this Qur'an? All of that power, that might, that strength, that wisdom, all of the things that the humans have no ability to come close to, it's all going to apply and be used in preservation of the deen. And that's why Allah says, we sent it down and we'll keep it safe. We sent it down, and we'll keep it safe. And think about the Sunnah of the Prophet and how the Isnad, it does so much. And from the things that which the Isnad does, or from that which the Isnad does, it prevents and it pushes and it inhibits people from even coming close. Because you see that it's chained down, so don't even think about stealing it. So weak people, weak scholastics, weak scholarships, weak scholars, they don't even want to get near the Hadith culture. They don't want to tamper with it, let alone non-Muslims, because they know that it is protection. That the Isnad is keeping it tight, it's keeping it firm. And it's no way, no matter how hard I try to pull on it, it ain't budging. 